mailman just came in and let me go over the packages quickly we got uh six packages i did not open any one of them so let's look at them together and see what to expect in upcoming videos this one is an ipad mini and no paper no note inside i'll have to look up the customer's name and see if he filled out a mail-in form and we have a box here oh bose headphones oh look at this probably a problem with the charging port or something like that we've done the beats headphones before you can check out the video again no paper i do not know why people do not include papers in those boxes it makes it difficult for me to look up the name because sometimes the name is not very clear on the box but i do see a name here so we'll see next package and it's a macbook a17 or 7 15 inch okay and there's paper here so we'll look into this one later i have two more packages here I think it's a console, either Xbox or PlayStation. And this one is an Xbox, One X. And we have a huge box here. I do not know what's inside that box. Maybe it's a gaming laptop or... I don't know. <laughs> Spectrum. So a lot of work to get done and a lot of boxes on the floor. It's not even funny. Maybe I have three tiles by three tiles to actually go outside. But I have very good news. The landlord of the plaza just came in and he said there's a very good chance that we can acquire the store next door. We've been after that shop for such a long time because we once heard that the tenant may be leaving. I've been after it since and I asked the landlord a couple of times, do you think she's going to leave? So now uh, it is confirmed that she's leaving. And uh, he said that we may be able to get the keys by end of the month. The other store is the same size as our store. We're going to keep the wall because we have a lot of things on the wall. But what we're going to do is we're going to open a door to enter to the other store from this store. And the other store, we're going to be using it for a lot of things. We're going to have a whole section for shipping inside. And the other section will be to put everything that we get, all the devices that needs to be repaired. We need to put them inside and clear out this area. And uh, the other thing is maybe 60 percent of that store we're gonna divide it to actually put benches for workshops we get training inquiries every single day so a lot of plans but i do not have a clear idea or a clear vision on how everything is going to be organized inside we'll take it one step at a time and if we did get the keys by end of the month that would be awesome and uh we're gonna start moving there right now we are four at the store myself big boss my uncle my dad, the one that handles packaging and shipments, and my wife comes a few hours every day and she enters all the devices in the system, bin number, name, address, email, so that when we finish any specific device, we just click one button and the invoice gets sent to the customer, they make a payment, and my dad is the one that can see this item is done and he package it and ship it out to the customer. So that's how things are going right now. A lot of people ask, why don't you hire more people? Because there's no room in the shop to hire more people. I mean, we can, uh, four people can barely fit in the shop. With all the stuff inside the store and all the boxes, all the packages, it's very, very hard to have room for anybody else to work here. So things will change when we have the other shop. When we are not in a workshop session, we have six or eight benches to work with. So uh, things are gonna be awesome, but we just have to wait. And here we have a Mercedes-Benz that's coming from San Diego. The guy called in before he mailed his key and he said that the key is not working. And his key is one of the keys that we do not have in stock. I mean, we have a box here that has over 200 Mercedes Benz keys. Look at this. Okay. The reason we have so much keys is we get about, I would say, 10 to 12 keys a week. But this type of key, we do not have the same one. This one comes with two coils, one and two. And the layout of the motherboard is different than anything that I have seen. But I was lucky enough to find one board that looks exactly the same. And this board looks like we used some parts from it. I do not know what's wrong with the key. I do not know if there's anything that we can take from this donor key to fix this key. The one other board I found that may have similar components is this one here. 
If you notice, this one has only one coil, whereas this one has two coils, and the layout of the motherboard is different, but I kept it on the side in case we can use parts from it. Let's take a look at the customer's board and see what's going on. The first thing I did when we got the key is I tried to press the buttons and we did not get a red light. When I say red light, I mean something like this. This is the battery for the Bensky. When the motherboard is put on to the battery like this and you press the button, you should see a light. Okay, I do not know if you can see it, but there's a light flashing. On the customer's board, it's dead. Very clean, nothing obvious. And when it looks good, chances are it's good. But this side, look at this side here. It looks like it may have suffered liquid damage. These are black in color. It doesn't mean the component is bad, but it's just an indication that maybe oxidation is taking place. And this here, it, the corrosion here may be shorting out the pins. And look at this cap. Look at this cap. It's gone. Rest of the board. We see maybe some corrosion on the NEC chip, and the NEC chip is very important. It contains the programming of the vehicle. Rest of the board looks good. This cap and Possibly this chip may be causing issues. Let's take a look at the donor board and see if we can borrow those components. Right there. So let's remove the capacitor from the customer's board and replace it with this clean capacitor that we just saw. Where is our donor board? Let's grab this capacitor and put it right over here. We can make it look better by applying some flux. I did not apply any flux at all. Very nice. Just do some cleaning. I don't know if we should change this chip. Honestly, I think it looks clean. There was some corrosion, but look at it. It looks clean. We're going to test the key using the key tester. And thanks to the user, we fix TVs who mailed this over to us as a gift. Really appreciate it. I left the device on and battery is dead, so I'm gonna change the battery quickly. Okay, it's on now. Hey, how's it going? Um, you know, I'm just, I'm just curious to find out like roughly how much it would cost to uh, install a new Okay, let's go ahead and test the key. And the meter should read 314, 315 when the button is pressed. Okay. I think I'm going to put this back in the shell because it's hard to test it like this. I do not have three hands. 
Unfortunately, I only have two hands and we have to hold the motherboard, the battery and the tester. It doesn't work. It doesn't work like that. I don't know if the customer's batteries are good. I'm using ours, but let me test this to see. We do have a light. Yep. Okay, let's test. Okay, testing is not displaying 314, 315 as it should. So there's something else. I mean, even though we have a light, we should get a 314, 315 reading when we press any one of the buttons. And right now that's not happening. What about if we test the infrared? You know what's weird? Look at this. When I get the key close to the meter, it displays 1A. 1A should only be displayed when any one of the buttons is being pressed. Look. So now the problem that we have is one of the buttons is being pressed all the time, and that should not be the case. When I press the button, the meter should show 1A, but right now, as soon as we get, we get the key onto the meter, it displays 1A. I think there could be corrosion on one of the buttons. Like, let me show you what happens if we try the other board, the other donor board. That's the other donor board here, okay? Look at this. It does not display 1A, but as soon as I press the button, it displays 1A. Back to zero. That's how it should be like. And when we point the key to the middle area of the device and we press on the button, it should read about 314, 315. Yeah, look at this. What I want to do is check the buttons. I do see some slight corrosion, but should not be a big deal. Maybe this button here, the one that's next to the corrosion. Uh, this button may be short enough. Let me try it again now. Yeah, still the same problem. I'm not pressing on any buttons, but the machine is seeing the key as button being pressed and no frequency. Okay, what I'm going to do right now is remove the buttons and see if we still have that issue. I would just want to eliminate the fact that it could be a button issue. I took one button out. Let's try the board now. I'm gonna test after removing each button so we know which one is causing the problem if in fact it's a button issue. My dad just came and Big Boss is here so I had to put the mask on. Let's see. Look at that, no more 1A. So the problem is the button. And it's the button that we just removed. Let's move over to right here.
Okay, solid. We can touch up on the legs. One A, press the unlock button. One A, very good. Press the lock button. One A, and press and hold the trunk button. One A, very good. Now we're gonna test the frequency. And frequency is not displaying 314, but it did before. I mean, we do have the light now. Infrared is working, but uh, I do not see the frequency. That's right outside the shell. Uh, here's what I noticed. When I'm pressing down hard on the board from this area and I press on the button, it's reading 314, 315 like it should. And look at this. If I press hard on the board, it reads 314. If I press hard, I'm thinking it could be this coil here. Maybe the coil is not making a good connection. So when I'm pressing on this side, it's pushing the coil. The coil is the tallest object on the board. Because there is nothing else that would change by pressing the board. Look at this. I mean, I'm pressing from here. And the color is the only thing that could cause this problem. That's very weird. Let me apply a solder blob on both edges of the coil and see if that changes anything. I mean, the coil is protected, so we cannot easily remove it and I do not have a replacement. I do have other shaped coils for the Mercedes-Benz, but not this one in specific. Let's see if that will help. And look at this. <laughs> Here, let me put it inside the key and test. I think it's working. 315 314 so the coil loose coil was the problem and the coil did not appear loose because it's protected but uh, the key is fully functional now and I'm glad I figured out the problem that was a tough one so that's it I hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe if you comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video